Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. Avak is shooting me. <laughs> welcome <laughs> back to the Factorial <laughs> Beginner's Guide. Best way uh, to welcome someone back. It's been a little bit since we've, since we've recorded, and Factorio has had some minor updates. Almost all of it bug fixes, which is great. Yeah, pretty now much all of it bug fixes, actually. Now that Factorio is out on Steam, there's a whole bunch of more, more people playing it, and uh, they're able to find a lot more of the little things that they couldn't like reproduce because people didn't have it. enough people weren't experiencing it. But now they are, which is yeah. great, and a lot of bugs are getting fixed. Um, what we've done off camera is we've moved the repair pack setup, so it looks a lot cleaner down there on the left. It's over here, yeah. Uh -huh. It's now running off the same metal belt, so it, it just saves us on redundancy because we were running two iron belts down in very close proximity. Why not just have it all running off the same one, basically? Because it's it impacts the scalability, and that's just something I want to touch on, is by doing it this way, we can't easily scale up how many that we're making, mm -hmm. or at least not as easily. But with the particular things we're making here, pipes and repair packs, we're already making them as fast and in such a high quantity that we're never going to really want it to be more than this. Unless you're making like a, a mega factory. We have like a million pipes and a million repair packs. Yeah. I think it's okay. We're probably not, never going to use what we've already got, let alone need more. And the other thing we moved was the steel production because it was really cramped. Yes. It was right up against our main bus. And we've moved over here into an area that we figured we'd use for oil, but we're probably not going to use this oil ever. No. So, yep, this has got our new steel production area, and it's working just fine. It's the same design as the copper and iron smelting, and it seems to work well, so we're going to yep. keep it there. You may also notice, uh, as um, right now the music is playing, I may have to adjust the, the uh, audio levels a little bit, but uh, there are a couple of new audio tracks as well, mm -hmm. which is quite nice. Right. Shen and I are standing conspicuously in this spot because we wanted to cover one thing with the main bus, and that is the idea of buffering. Now, Shen, if you'd like to explain the whys and wherefores of doing this while I quickly set it up, it's fairly simple, so you can just follow what I'm doing rather than me talking about it. Sure. So the idea is, if anything in your factory goes wrong, let's say you run out of iron ore, let's say you run out of copper ore, let's say your electricity goes off, let's say biters come in and wreck some of your base. If anything goes wrong, then your belts will simply turn off. I mean, whatever resources on them will get interrupted and it will no longer be on your main bus. And you don't want your factory to just turn off because something happens. If you run out of a, mater of a material, you don't want your factory to shut off. So what the main bus does is it puts items into boxes, giant steel chests that hold tons and tons of resources, and it puts them back on the belts. So the way this works is if something turns off, let's say your iron ore runs out, well, this side of the buffer will be gone. It'll just be empty, barren. This belt will have nothing on it. But these boxes will still be full, and these full boxes will continue to put items onto the belts. We'll have to put some splitters in here to balance yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was about to cover that, but yeah. Um, but this, these boxes will continue to put items onto your belt so that your factory itself, which is producing all the materials you need, will never shut down. And that's very important. So these buffer boxes will come in super duper handy if anything ever happens to your base. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, if you'd like to set up the uh, just the, the splitters to balance those belts, because as you can see, when an inserter is facing the head of a belt, or the tail or the head of the, head of the belt. It'll only tend to put on one side of the belt, so you'll end up with what we've got going on on the copper line there. There's a whole side of the belt that's just not being used right now, so obviously, for efficiency's sake, we want that to split it between both sides of the belts. And you, you've seen us set up uh, belt balances with splitters numerous times, so we don't really need to cover there. <laughs> Unless Shen is... I'm fine with just doing that off camera, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So, so today we wanted to cover the early uses of oil. In the last episode, we talked about and we set up our first little oil production area, including some oil, what are they called? Oil pump jacks, which pull the crude oil out of the ground, the storage facility for crude oil, and then we had one oil refinery, which turned it into petroleum gas, light oil, and heavy oil, which we're also storing. Yeah, as you can uh, well, see, we've we've basically upscaled what we had before and just tidied it up a little bit. It should be evident how we've uh, set this all up, just basically to avoid crossing the pipes between any particular um, mm -hmm. any multiple types of liquids or gases. But everything you saw us do in the last episode, that's what we've got here. We've just made it a little bit tidier or increased the amount that we're doing. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, one of the things we're going to do today is cover fuel blocks. And this is something yes. we touched on in the past. Right now, we're fueling everything in our factory off of coal. So all of our furnaces and our power plant itself are being run off of coal power. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it is not the most efficient thing in the game. No. Fuel blocks come along right about now when you first research oil, and they are highly efficient compared to coal. The amount of energy you get out of one fuel block is far greater than the amount of energy you get out of one lump of coal. I'll just go grab a lump of coal so I can give you the exact numbers. A oh, lump of coal, it. oh, yep. eight megajoules for one lump of eight coal. Eight megajoules, and we don't, we haven't produced any of the fuel blocks yet. No, they're but 25. If we mouse over it, 25, right. So 25 for each fuel block versus eight megajoules for each lump of coal, which means it's more than three times as efficient, which is really nice. The other really so, nice thing also comes in from something that we mentioned previously, and that is that oil uh, pump jacks, whilst they do have um, sort of efficiency based on how much is there for them to pump, they get they, they start pulling up less and less oil over time. They never stop. Mm -hmm. A coal mine will. Once it's gotten all the coal off that tile, uh, coal off that tile, that's it. There's no more co coal there. So if you were running your whole um, infrastructure, your power, everything off that. Well, you, you're kind of out of luck now. You've got no more power. Where, as if you, as long as you've got enough pump jacks, that little trickle coming from each one will be enough to keep the fuel blocks flowing. So it's a little bit safer as well in some ways. Yes, indeed. Fuel uh, fuel blocks will never run out because oil never runs out. Yeah, that's just a really nice thing. It does get a lot less, so don't expect it to be the same production amount. Uh, over time, but it will never run out. So down here, we've set up a very simple fuel block production area, and um, we're going to mirror it on the left-hand side. It's yep. just light oil going into chemical plants, and that's the only recipe it does is solid fuel blocks. And we're going to bring those fuel blocks up and per merge them onto the same line where we have coal, and we're just going to turn off the coal production for now. We're not going to use coal again until we get into plastics. Yes. The the one thing that I've seen some people do is once they've gotten to um, fuel blocks, they, they basically just shut down their coal mining. But that isn't quite the, the wisest thing to do because there are still plenty of things that you're going to want coal for, namely plastics, but also some explosives will make use of, of coal itself. So you don't want to stop mining it. You just don't want to keep using it for things like uh, your fuel. Okay, yep. that's brilliant. So we've brought some electricity down and the factory just instantly turns on. Uh, and you set the recipe over here, solid fuel. You set this just like you would on any assembly machine, except these can only take certain recipes. Only assembly machines can do some recipes like you've seen, you know, making an inserter, making a belt, whatever. Those are done in assembly machines, but a lot of things that include oil products are done in chemical plants instead. Now to hook this up, because uh, fuel blocks can simply be used in place of coal. You don't need any specific fancy way of of moving it around. You just hook it up in place of the old coal mine. Um, it can it can run straight up behind the current coal, and it'll all work itself out. It'll be fine. So there we yep, go. We're gonna use we're gonna all be on the same, same belt. the same splitter setup that Abax yep. set up a little while ago to uh, focus as much of the fuel possible into the uh, electricity producing area so that we never run out of electricity. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left over, which is about what, one third or is this one quarter? One quarter. One quarter. So one quarter of the fuel will go into the production of materials for our factory. Yeah. That's the thing with, with the, the fuel blocks. They can be used in any way that coal can be used, except for very specific recipes mm -hmm. that actually want carbon effectively. Ah. But um, oh, So what ahead. recipe is that? Well, plastics, explosives. Those okay. are some of the obvious ones. I think we should start researching plastics. It is yes. probably the next thing that we want, mainly because it doesn't require blue science yet, and we're not ready to produce blue science yet. So I've actually go ahead and queued up yeah, plastics. Yeah. And this is very easy to produce. And look, it uses coal. So now that we've turned off coal production up here, we're going to take this coal and make some plastic out of it. Wow. What we're going to have to do with that is run it in the opposite direction, which will take a little bit of time. We'll probably right. need to uh, squirrel this around a little bit just to make room for this down there. Or 
And I think this is going to be the better idea. Is just stop mining it from here. We don't need yeah, it. That works too. If we what we're trying to do, and what I would actually recommend you do in your factory again, you know, it, it's different structures for different folks. But I like to have my oil, and then my my the sort of stuff that goes onto a belt produced in one part of the factory, and anything that goes through pipes generally focused in another part of the factory. Mm -hmm. So we that's kind of what we've got going here. All of our oil is down here. Now there will be some exceptions. Some things just make sense to have near your main bus. But for uh, all intents and purposes, we can just grab the co the coal from down here and make our plastics local to where we're actually making everything else to do with with oil. Because plastics, if we have a look on the research, will require petroleum gas. So we've got a line of petroleum gas over here. We could even possibly just set up the plastics just here and then start, much as we've got with the... Uh, sulfur, just belt the plastic up into the factory where it'll be used. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. So we've covered fuel blocks. I think the next thing we want to do is explain what's up with sulfur and sulfuric acid. So this is this mm -hmm. is sulfur. It's just this wonderful color, and it's changed. Um, in the last video you saw, we made sulfur. It was a it was a yellow powder. Now it's yellow crystals. So they've updated the graphics. It's the same yeah. thing. And uh, it's never really used in anything directly. But what you do use it for is sulfuric acid. And Avac, uh, what does sulfur? What does sulfur, What do you use sulfuric acid for? Well, there's two really important things. One is batteries. Now, as you can imagine, as you start moving your technology along, batteries get used in a lot of different stuff. Um, the the earliest use for batteries, in my opinion, the, the most obvious one, is for lasers. You need a lot Ooh. of batteries to make a laser gun. Did you say lasers? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have those yet, but I want them. Yes, yes, we do. Because that drops the, the sort of logistics requirements for your outpost bases quite a lot if you can just run them off uh, power, either moving it there from your main base or generating it locally. You don't need bullets, they just use power. The other thing right. that we will eventually be using it for is... Um, sulfuric acid gets used in blue circuits, which are used in a lot of end game material. So you, you're not just going to want it for batteries. You do want to make a bit of a production area to have it available for different types of production as well. Uh huh. So what what you need for sulfuric acid? We're going to make some of this right now. Mm -hmm. You need some sulfur, some iron, and water. So we have our sulfur being produced, and we're bringing that north of the railroad tracks. We have some water here at this little pond. Now we're going to start making some sulfuric acid. I'll bring down the iron plates if you want to. Do you have some chemical plants on you? I am building some chemical plants oh, I can now. give some to you right now. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you very much. Right. Well, since the uh, water is going to be used in this process, we are going to want to have the chemical plants facing up to this pump, I would say. So we could pop one there. And I'll just space them apart a little bit just so it's easier to walk through as well now if you put in the recipe you'll see it only needs water so we don't have to be mindful of which side as we do with the sulfur because one side will always be water and one side will be sulfur this is not configurable you have to just pipe the things to where it wants it to be um, so we are going to want to bring down the pipes that's fairly easy I'm going to need to make a couple of um, oh, actually, I'll just go and grab some since we're making them over here, just pipe to ground, just so that, again, we can move freely around. Also, we've finished our research. Do you want to pick the next one, Shen? Let's see. What would be useful here? Ah, anything else? Anything else that needs red and green science and doesn't need blue yet, I'm going for it. So the first thing I sure. see is advanced electronics. I'm not interested in anything that it does just yet. I just want to keep researching while we're idle here. But this unlocks red and blue circuits. Red circuits require plastics, which we'll get into soon. And blue circuits, this is a little bit down the road. You can see it requires green circuits, red circuits, and sulfuric acid. So let's get that research in. Yep. And if you could move, thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. There we go. We need some electricity. I have a up. large one for you. <laughs> Did I say that wrong? <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, moving along. Swiftly. And uh, what we're going to do, since we don't really need a whole lot of input on these, we're going to yeah. merge the sulfur and the iron onto one belt. Shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, we could actually, let me set this up a little oh. bit differently. We'll just move all okay. of these down and then we can have two belts and then long handled inserters, actually. Since that wouldn't be any real issue sure. for us. Works for me. And uh, it just keeps 
The, the throughput is, nice and high. This is something that you'll run into all the time, is just the need to move stuff around. Don't be afraid to do this because your factory is very flexible. It's just open space. You can build wherever you want. There's no particular reason. There's no benefit to building a certain way over a different way. So if you if you need room, make room and just build the way you're comfortable with. Don't force yourself into a corner. Yeah. Which I do all the time. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. Right. Now, the thing with sulfuric acid, it is a gas, so it is going to go into pipes. And given that we will actually be using sulfuric acid for a number of different things, it's probably reasonable to have at least one tank. I am notoriously bad for always wanting to store and have huge stockpiles of things. I'm basically a hoarder. So, uh, yeah, I do basically what Shen does, and I make <laughs> stupidly large amounts of uh, sulfuric we'll, acid we'll storage. We will I never need it. We're, we're doing it anyway. I like having it because visually, I think it makes uh, a lot of sense to have something yeah. that say, hey, at a distance, if I zoom out, I can see down there, there's heavy oil, there's light oil, there's petroleum gas. I know what's in these tanks just by zooming out. If there's only one of them, it might, might be hard for me to pick out what it is. There's only one tank. Now, there four is, tanks, it's super easy. There is one downside to having this much storage, and that is that this isn't only using fuel, it's using iron. Mm -hmm. So we could drain our resources by doing this. But realistically speaking, if you've got a, a reasonably productive factory, you're not going to run into resource shortage. It's, the oil, perhaps, from one oil field, you might start bleeding that a bit dry. But you can just expand and find more places to get oil from. It gives you a reason to do other things with oil, like building up... Um, um, different mining oil outposts train. and training oil and train. training it around. Yeah, yeah, an oil <laughs> train. They will. They are actually looking at building liquid tank uh, carriages for trains as well. So it's not just oh. going to be a case of sticking it into an oil barrel and then that would and be running really it fun, on. Actually, yeah. that would you just be have really a tank fun. that would connect up to the train. That'd be great. Okay, so this is a very basic setup for uh -huh. doing sulfuric acid. Yep. And uh, we're not going to be doing the blue science. Uh, the, I mean, not the blue science. We're not going to be doing the blue electronics today. But what no. we can do today is batteries. Oh, we man. can set those up. We will quickly throw that together and then we'll probably look to uh, put in a cut here and getting the plastic set up again. It's it's just running the, uh, the the various lines around and you don't need to see that. You've seen us do that a few times, but batteries, we can probably just get that set up now. Sure. And we are actually starting to run into the issue now where the iron is only on one side of the belt. We'll also do that off camera as well when we set up the plastic. Right. Right. So why don't we, uh, you want to make a little cut here then? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put a cut here. We'll set up the plastic just so that we can talk about it when we come back. And we'll also show the batteries as well. So, Shane, would you like to take us out? Sure. Thanks for watching. See you in a little bit. Yes. And uh, uh, bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ow. Thank you.